Hey, good evening, and welcome to Montpelier Civic Forum. And as we march towards Town Meeting Day 2020, we'll do what we've always done for years. We're going to talk to all of the city council candidates. We're going to talk to the school board candidates. We're going to have the city budget, and we're going to have the school budget. And basically, this is going to be an interesting year. Um, we have, for the first time in a long time, we have a district with two races. Uh, and that's District 3, and that's what we're going to be discussing tonight. Uh, Ann Watson will be in running for mayor, uh, unfortunately running unopposed because I'd like to see two people. Uh, Connor and Donna will be running in their respective districts. They'll be on together as incumbents. I think that will be interesting. Uh, we have two school board members who are incumbents, and then we have the people who are running for school who basically will be elected, so we're going to have them in together as well. And Libby and Bill will be in talking about their budgets. This is going to be a good series. But tonight, I'm in with, I'm in District 3, and I'm in the two-year term, and I have Eugene Leon with me. Yes. Did I, I pronounce the last name correctly? Correctly, correctly. Yeah, uh, I'm what glad to be here. What yeah, part of District 3 do you live in? So I'm right on the other side of the river on Berlin Street, and... Um, you mean on the speedway? <laughs> on the speedway, which we proactively was in, were involved, you know, the community there to try to reduce the speed limit. Can you tell me a, your role in that? Well, I submitted to Tom a public works. Tom McCardle, who used to be who public just works. stepped down, yeah, um, retired. Our, my concern when I moved there three years ago, I bought a house, a brick house up on on Berlin Street, and noticed that this is a hazardous. <laughs> Situation for why was for it being, situation well everyone's for you. speeding yeah it's people are speeding I know for kids roadkill you know there's there's pedestrian crosswalks there's uh, bus stops school bus stops public school bus uh, stops and uh, plus the pedestrian crossways and a bike path and a sidewalk so it's a neighborhood it's every all the characteristics that any other neighborhood in Montpelier has. And why is this a, a, a highway, <laughs> basically? And people just, just speeding on all, all, all hours. And um, I raised my concerns, filed a petition, the concern. Two years later, I'm at Bill's office, you know. Bill Fraser, yes, the city manager. Yes, why is this, isn't this on the table? So it just so happens that that summer, last year, it was uh, addressed. And we I gathered the community, raised awareness, uh, Tom from the bridge did a, uh, I did my Brown. own, yeah, Brown, he did a, a story on it, and I did my own data, I bought a velocity speed gun uh, to, wow. to track, and I would take pictures of all the, the, the speed, so I, everyone, the average speed was 40, 45, I, at the time 35, so. What was it like getting out of the driveway? <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad in my driveway, but I could, you know, um, I could see the concern for, there's a lot of side roads, uh, you Heber, know, a lot of street, South, Heber Sherwood. and Sherwood and Wilson and Valerie and what's, there's, uh, there's a few, there's quite a few. And, you know, getting into, in, onto Berlin Street or into some of these tight driveways is also a problem. So my, my driveway is, is, is pretty good, but yeah, and the winter's hard with the banks, the snow what banks. What were both hard sides on that argument? I know it wasn't a unanimous vote. It wasn't. Um, what was the other side? Uh, um, you know, I understand some, some people raise concern on when there's snow, it's a hill, going up the hill. So I say to them, you know, on those small number of days that it might have just started snowing. You mean gaining sufficient gaining speed? Gaining some speed, so it's okay to step on the, on the gas in, the, in that moment, you know. And, to get up the hill. I didn't see any valid, strong, for, in the opposition points made. Uh, I, I mean, I know one of the council members said something that was quite disturbing as far as, you know, well, I can't, I have to ride, uh, so I have to st step on the brakes every time I'm on that road. But it's the same thing with Baldwin, Main Street, used to be 35. In the 90s, right. it was dropped to 25. The, the citizens there wanted, you know, the same. Traffic calming. Correct. So 
it happened then, why couldn't it happen on Berlin Street? This is a, a neighborhood with a lot of new families moving in, um, seniors that, that have been there for a long time. There's, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's part of the, you know, having a, a safe and healthy public. District uh, 3 has a different character than District uh, 1 and District 2. Uh, you mean because of the just, location? Just geographic look. Yeah. Uh, can there is a little about, part of District 3. Can you talk about three. District 3? I, well, there is a part of District 3 that's here on Main Street. Right. Yeah, cut off, and, and it's for population. Um, but District 3, the majority of District 3, which I call the Berlin Street area, and, that, um, and then up to Northfield Street, I, 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 I want that district to also feel that it's part of the city and part of Montpelier and not separated. How does it not, not feel? Um, or do people feel alienated a little bit? I, I, you know, when I was going door to door and, um, you know, talking about the speed limit and when it was in the public hearings and, we're, and we rallied to get, I did feel sense that, that they were kind of excluded. Like, why are we the only street left that's, you know, 35 when other streets were and are 25? Here's an example, the National Life, which is not a neighborhood, going up to the same kind of steepness, going up, that's 25. And they're closed on the weekends, you know? So, and there's a lot of these streets, you know, Baldwin Ave, College Street going down downhill. You have to ride your brakes on all, Main Street. You have to ride your brakes on all these other streets. So you, you do it in Berlin Street. It, it shouldn't be a problem. So, so we're gonna wanna work on getting a, I know some of the other council members mentioned doing a citywide 25, like Barry did. The young mayor Barry, when they asked him what his greatest accomplishment was, was um, he said in a recent interview, um, getting a citywide 25. He said, what, what was his biggest challenge? He said getting t people to drive 25 <laughs> in the city. So it would be nice to have a citywide 25. There's only a couple streets left, basically. Is 30225? Yes. So when you're getting into Barry by the Well, I'm, I'm talking about our part of 302 oh, part over over by I think we go all the way to 35, the, correct, yeah. Right. Yeah. Over, we go by the wayside. That's still Montpelier and Tractor Supply is still Montpelier mm -hmm. all the way to what used to be Walker Motors. Volkswagen. Oh, right. Is yeah. that 25 or 35? 35. Okay. Yeah. Um Sherwood, there's a steep hill going down that's 25 that goes into right there into Wayside. Yeah, yeah but keeping Berlin that, Street. I mean, keeping cars going at 25 is right, probably the challenge. Well, it takes, you know, bad would you habits. See traf would you see traffic calming on, on Sherwood? Bumps to keep people from, well, the bumps from racing is down there? Well, you have the plow issue with, with the bumps, so... Um, it takes a little bit of enforcement, education, and, you know, signs, uh, the, you know what works is uh, that some of the neighbors um, have, have, are requesting it is uh, the flashing, so the speed, it tells you your speed and flashing mm -hmm. if you're going too fast. That's an effective way to, you know, because we all have to check our speed. We all sometimes forget. Sometimes I'm driving and I might, you know, have to press my brakes because I, I might, you know, forget that it's, you know, I have to slow down. It's the neighborhood. So that's a good start, I think, to, to those, you know what I'm talking about. The right, right. Yeah, yeah. The, the flashing. And then the pedestrian crosswalks, I think adding another one a little further up on Berlin Street and making that a little more clear, like on Elm Street. The Elm Street pedestrian crosswalks have a flashing light. There right. is a as, flashing. As they do downtown. Correct. Uh, at, um, well, Elm Street Barry also Street. has the speedometer sign exactly. with the flashing. Yeah, so some, that would be wonderful. District 1, the defining elements of District 1 are um, on Elm Street, we have mm -hmm. the rec center, yeah. the rec pool and, yeah. and the rec fields. We have Hubbard Park, of course. District 2 has the green on College Avenue. Yeah, um, and the, co the college. Exactly. Is, yeah. there, is there any yes. place that you could see for adding yes. public I've actually space to District 3? Yes, and I've, and I've brought this up recently on a... On a on a public meeting uh, with the mayor um, that uh, we looked at in the 
the map of the, of the region up off Heber, there's a small parcel that the city owns that was land trusted, uh, conserved lands. And that could be, it, it wouldn't take- A pocket take, park? Excuse me? A pocket park? Yeah, or? that could be the, the Berlin Street area park. You know, Is that, a, now a I'm, I'm gonna take you into the weeds. Um, the, on um, Harrison Street, there's a small area that was deeded to the city by Heaton Woods mm. across from Temple Beth Jacob that's, that the schools use for soccer and oh, things yeah, like yeah. that. Is it that sized or is it smaller? I, don't quote me on this, but I be, it might be around five. People access it now. It might be five acres. There's Oh, uh, it's that big? Yeah, yeah. There's trails back there. Um, but it would, it would just be as simple as it wouldn't be anything on the budget really just my just to put a sign saying you know the name of the park city of Montpelier a few stands for the dog you know clean up after your dog with the bags and a picnic table or two that's that's basically it you know what have it, the neighbors other than you stepped forward on this Is no this? I brought this up recently in the <laughs> And thought it was a you know a fabulous idea. So this is something I so look forward to. Is there anything else in District Three that you would like to see? Is if, uh, any other defining projects in District Three? I think besides the sign and the speed limit in those areas and and uh, the park, I think for that's a good step for now. Yeah. Um, I used to talk when Ann was. Yeah. Um, well, I'm sorry, Ashley. No, when Ashley Hill no. was, was city council person and running, we would discuss the economic development of that area on River Street. Okay, on River Street, yeah. yeah. And Montpelier Alive has a charge from the state for the core downtown. Mm -hmm. That is that is why their funding exists. They can't reach out to that area mm. uh, by their charter. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can do to incorporate that area? Those are family businesses, <coughs> and as people Correct. who some, watch this some, know, some are residential. That's also you mean on the main drag on River. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Um, where uh, where we have um, the paint stores, where we have uh, um, uh, Utten, you know, yes. that that whole series, yeah, that would, that's all the great, way to Growlers. That's a great question. Yes. Yeah, um, I mean, as people who watch this know, my wife has a downtown business in the core yeah. downtown. But that strip right there, yeah, has is there anything uh, that you could see that potential, could be, yes. I think what what is the potential for that in your in Well, your for uh, some more businesses, you know, and uh, shops. And it, it's tough because there's a lot of vacancies now, right now, in downtown Montpelier. And that's something, uh, I mean, that, that's got to find a creative, get an insight on what could be done about the getting folks to, to what is your it. vision downtown uh, the downtown plan let's let's go to that okay. while, while you brought up that I got some notes okay sure <laughs> feel um, free what is your vision for commercial downtown Montpelier well it what it's so this in downtown because there's the Sabin's pasture right uh, that's that, a dip, that's a different that, and then of course we have the new development uh, we have distillery lane right next to Bar Hill and you know the the transit center. I went to the opening of that. It was an amazing, well accomplished, well planned project. And and I know you um, for housing and having the, the the buses go through there now, which is also a, a really it was I think it was a well thought out way of diverting traffic because you know they were all on Main Street and now having it go that way. I sense that there's a, a little bit of a, you know, a less of an impact on Main, on Main Street because of the bus. The bus is not stopping now in front of Shaw's. Right, and, right. you know, the Greyhound now could go. Well, in theory, the Greyhound still can, stops in front of City they Hall, they but eventually, yeah, eventually the Greyhound will stop. And the stop other tour the buses as center. well. I mean, the pad is, is there. There is a next to the building. I know some people have, have read were misinformed or, or did not see the, the initial plans, but the pad is there for the larger buses to pull right alongside the building. Yeah. Uh, again, when Greyhound gets the word, right. you know, I, from what I understand, our public works is negotiating with Greyhound on that issue. Right. And possibly you'll still have a few cold winter days when eventually people will be able to sit 
in that transit center waiting yeah. for the Greyhound instead of standing Correct. in front of yeah. City Hall. And it's a great welcome, it could be a welcome center. That small, that area there inside, they have a vending machine up, but that would make a great little cafe. You know, coffee and something quaint and, and as a welcome to the city of Montpelier. You know. have, you, um, have you been keeping up with the, master, the downtown master plan discussions? A little bit, and, and I, had, I did have some notes. Um, Could you kind the, of fill us in in your thinking on that, and, as well as traffic calming on Main Street? Well, I think the transit center helped on that, on that, in that perspective, not having the buses right on Main Street, especially during uh, traffic hour. Um, also, the farmer's market, that's still up in, in the air as far as where is it going to be. Well, I think that's been decided that they're, they're going to use the area right across from the transit center in front yeah. of the wood chip plant. The, the state parking lot will be used the state for that. Parking lot. During the winter, Bar Hill Yes, is and I've it. been up there, and, it's, and I'm glad they're hosting it. They're, they're not charging every other weekend. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a But when it moves venue. permanent, it will move there. Um, right. Which, of course, takes us across. What, what are your thoughts well, on Well, there's the, the parking lot debate, which I'm... I was know, just going to head yeah, into so the parking that's, garage. You know, there's an impact on traffic, and, you know, we're, and I'm not 100% certain on where the hotel plan is to go. Well, the hotel go. plan is hinged on the parking garage, from on what the parking I gather. Garage. Uh, that yeah, on the, that lot, which they right, just Right, on that put, lot. Um, they just recently put... Um, hotel parking. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, which is open, but it's also part partly public right. parking. So, um, I think, you know, we have to... I, I just read this morning in the news a small town in uh, North, Car North Carolina, Lake Town. <coughs> they just passed, the select board and city council just passed a temporary hold on growth, if you believe it or not, because... <laughs> Well, they can ship some of that over to here, right? right. Well, it's, you know, a 15-minute commute within the last three, three years has become an hour commute. And so the growth was uh, so, so much that they're trying to slow it down because of traffic, because you, it wasn't well planned. So it's responsible planning and, um, like, like you had mentioned, um, well, that's a that's a city. Thoughtful planning is 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 essential. So you have to consider the traffic flow on any type of growth. That that's you know, we're not. You put three hundred as an example. Um, unit building somewhere on along Barry Street, it's gonna be a problem. You know, if if that, all that traffic now is gonna start going to the bridge or to. Um, back on to Barry to Maine. I ask this question of everyone who runs for city council. Is this a city or is this a town? I think Vermont as a whole is a town. How so? I, it's, it's just Vermont is a small town as a whole. As a, it's, our population is low. and 7,500. What's that? 7,500. We are the smallest Well, the state city, capital. we all, yeah. Right. So even Burlington, I, I don't, you know, That's the uh, smallest, city, biggest city smallest in the nation. State. Correct. Yeah. For a state. Right. Right. It's a town, but we are a city. How yeah. so? Could, could, well, because we're a city is corporated. So well, I, in, in a legal sense, yes. Yeah. But in a, in a sociological sense, what it, as a town, what is our strength? Well, we have the fact that we are the smallest capital in the country. And the only makes one without a McDonald's, without a McDonald's Walmart, and Which Starbucks. all makes it a, a unique experience, you know. And, and, and it's nice to have the have a appeal of, you know, Vermont lifestyle and small town, but yet it's a small city, you know, to, to at least call it a city. It's, it's, I think it's great that we have this small city in the capital region. Um, and what makes it unique is the, the state capital and the buildings, the shop, the history, you know, and, and the park is and, and the, the recreation. You mean and having all, having that all, much acreage the, in the core of town? Correct. Yeah. And, and all that's, that it's offered. And 
still much more to offer, much more potential to, for growth and development. What, as far what as do you I see you know, as potential for growth? Well, there's a lot of housing. aging, you know, infrastructures like the rec center and you know certain streets, certain maybe like in that region by uh, area on District Three where you mentioned off River Street. You know, certain areas that can be developed, modernized. Um, and preserved also some of the maybe vacant lots or vacant lands that might belong to the city. You know, try to see, cr find creative and alternative means of, of trying to figure out, uh, you know, what, how could it benefit the city and the people in the city and th those who visit the city. Do you, um, since you've, how long and have you been in Montpelier? In this area, six years now. Okay. Uh, savings pasture was an issue six years ago. Right. Savings pasture was an issue 16 years ago. Mm. Do you see anything being built on savings pasture? I, again, is thoughtful planning. Yes, I think with, with thoughtful planning and um, it, it could. It seems it glacial. Could be, it know? could be a, a thrive. I mean, it's a beautiful area. I mean, it could be half preserved, you know, with, with trails and. Um, you know, uh, uh, hike, bike paths and hiking areas, and it's like a small Hubbard back there. Also, a lot, also with a, a maybe a small development housing community, and with some retail as well. So it's basically expanding out a little bit with housing and commercial. What uh, what are the challenges that the city faces? You'd be sitting on council. And every challenge in this town ends up eventually before council with people, yeah. uh, you know. Um, well, there's always, gonna, there's always challenges, and there's always every meeting there's a challenge, it seems like. And I think uh, public awareness, public insight, public feedback is very important. I mean, and, and um, intelligent, and logical approaches to handling certain issues and, and, and problems as, uh, along with uh, uh, creative and open ways to, to address them. But I think it's important that the public, uh, having public feedback is, is essential. How would, you, how would you increase that? I know the city council in the last couple of years has really been focused on trying to, I wouldn't say the word inclusive because they've always tried to include us. Yeah. We just have never stepped forward to be included as, well, a, as a community. How would you change the communications? You know, Front, front Porch Forum is a pretty, is a great uh, access, a way to find what's going on and, and hearings and People to attend, you can't force people to attend, but if, if I emphasize, I personally want to do a weekly, kind of like Glenn did on our district, a week, weekly, every Tuesday, have a public, you know, and I have... Actually, Ann and, has, has hours. Yeah, she does. I've gone to see her. Our mayor. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's important to me, you know, to get public feedback and get people to come, and, and if they can be a voice at the public hearing, then they could share their concerns or, you know. What do you hear as the concerns of District 3? You've walked I around, you've campaigned now, yeah. and when you go door to door. Uh, I still hear the, about the speed limit situation, so I think it's important to address that still and put that, maybe get a citywide 25 back on the table. Um, and people have shown concern about now the tax increase four percent so it's something I hear a lot is uh, taxes you know it's the tax is going up everything goes up gas goes up you know and wages aren't going up as uh, you know so it's it's a concern that people do have you know as uh, the property taxes and I I just it's also a, you know there's certain things that people could do to that they might not be doing, you know. Such as? Are they filing their, you know, they're a full-time resident, or they're filing their state prebate, you know, ahead of, you know, on time, and are they being efficient in their homes with 
you know, energy to help them save and cut back on other costs, on water, on, you know, this, this, all their alternatives that could help alleviate if there is a slightly increased tax. Well, this year's budget was unique yeah. uh, because of the health costs. Correct. Uh, the, the, yes, you'll yes. hear that, and I should and tell you yeah. that that will be discussed in the show that where Bill discusses the city budget. But not only that, that will be discussed in the show where Libby talks about the school budget mm. because both of those were really impacted by health insurance costs. Correct, yeah, the health insurance costs. And that, that was beyond council's ability to control. Right. Is there something I mean, in the budget that's under-addressed, do you think? Under-addressed? Yeah, is there something that's... I haven't seen the final figures. I was at the last hearing. I, I actually, and I want to thank Orca for, for presenting it every other week. Uh, so I, I, there was been a couple of times I just couldn't make it, but I've, I've been able to watch them live on YouTube. So it's But do great. you think we're... we're is uh, public works, police, fire, right. social services, is there something in the city budget that you think could use more attention? I think uh, all the departments and the committees and some of the other departments that are represented by committees, I think we're well addressed, you know, and, and as far as the aging infrastructures go and the idea for the new um, upgrading of the water treatment, so, you know, it was the presentation was phenomenal and very detailed where we could make revenue from the energy that could be... Can I stop you yeah, for a second? Anne is discussing that on her show oh, yeah. uh, when she's running for mayor and Bill will be discussing that on his show in a lot more detail because that is a story and that's a yes. good story. It's a good and you're right, it, 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 it was a compelling story before council right. and it's a compelling story on these shows as well. So I think, you know, most of it was all addressed, and, and some of it that was still up on the table, I think, needs a little bit more uh, polling as far as, you know, public, in, like the recreational... Um, the building. Building, you know, I think... Where I went I like went to that public hearing. I, I was, I think, the only person... I, I didn't see any other council members present. Um, but it was, it was phenomenal, and... and can I get the your presentation, on that? yeah, the presentation was great, and uh, we got a tour of the building. It's been it hasn't been well maintained in the last, you know, so many years. Did they take years. you through the basement? Yes, the old shooting, shooting range. Yeah, the old shooting pretty, range. Yeah, it was pretty phenomenal. Did, they, did you see it. the crack in the wall? I did. I did. I saw it all, and and but we need. I still think we need more public opinion and feedback. You know, not just well, five million dollars is a pretty hefty. It's price really tag. hefty, and and also as when I say creative and alternative ways, um, get other uh, architects or other you know points companies of points of views to to bid or or give consultation or give other get other not from not just one company or not just ten percent of our population. You know, you have to consider that there's. A gym five, less than five miles away at ten dollars a month, and right, right. and there's other gyms around. Um, so, do people want to pay? You know, do we want to set up another public bond for this? It's 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 that's a challenge. You know, the the rec center. I, I would like to see more public opinion. Is it going to be supported by the community? You know, what what's your thought on trying to square the circle on? Um, Downtown speeding. We're, we're speeding again, and yeah. we're talking about downtown uh, on Main Street, uh, bicycles versus parking, approximate parking to the businesses mm. versus bike lanes. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it's, you know, bikes. That's in, coming in the that's winter. Coming is, is a difficult, yeah, it's a difficult um, bit. They're, they did it I think two years ago, coming from Barry and onto Berlin by the uh, where the right they've Petco, got that green lane over correct. by that's, by price chopper in that right. area right. that was well made that was well done uh, and and that that's something we could look into um, but it is tight and narrow as it is so it's maybe just that certain small strips of downtown 
we don't need it. And then once you get out of the center, then like they did in, in that Barry Berlin area, you know, then put those bike lanes in place. Uh, there's a $45,000 measure on the ballots uh, uh, dealing with homelessness, dealing with the, that the was task, asked for well, by the Homeless Task, task Force. Task force. Yeah. What's your thought on homelessness and um, begging, downtown that's begging? A, that's a good question, very good question. And, it's a, it's, and I've often thought of this because that's a very challenging situation you know for for instance um suddenly from one year to the next you have 30 people hanging out in the city that are homeless how do you deal with that in in a respectful and honorable fashion and every and i've actually sat and spoken to many of of of, of some of the, these folks who are who have just been in the streets uh, peddling um and every case is different, and every situation is different. And well, I every, think we're so picking I, up. I think our, our, our I, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn on this. I think that um, the forty-five thousand, a lot of it is going to a social worker. Correct. Right. So the ta the task force um, will address the individuality of each case instead of as this is a problem. No, because yeah, it is a problem, but we could address it one person at a time. You know, it's. And uh, and again, come up with with uh, a solution that that everyone benefits from. I, I think we're also talking about regionalizing it, our approach to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, Good Samaritan is right, at the yeah. Methodist Church. Good Samaritan's in Barry. I think Mary again Hooper, one one organization only. One architect. What we need to find other organizations that could come in and you know, assess and, and give an insight and maybe also assist. And there's other nonprofits as well that, that, could, that, that have dealt with these issues. So you would see us being more collaborative, more collaborative as, as a yeah, community. Yeah. You know, I asked... And getting together with other cities and discussing like we are with Barry, though. Yeah. Boy, I, I almost hate to ask this, but I will. You came in with, with notes. No, Is there anything that you want to discuss that we haven't touched on? Well, you, you came so you well prepared. Some of the interview questions, and I just, you know, community prosperity. Uh, uh, like I said, I think public feedback is important. Um, working together as a community is, is essential. Well, we've been working on that for so long. For so long, yeah. Uh, but we're a town. We're neighbors. Right. Correct. Um, and... And volunteers make the world a better place. So, you know, volunteers in the community make things happen, you know. Um, well, we've got that going in spades in our schools. Right. I mean, the number of people who volunteer in our schools is extraordinary. Yeah. The number of uh, work-adjusted uh, work sites that Matt McLean gets community-based learning sites mm -hmm. that the kids in high school go to yeah. for a community our size really is yeah, extraordinary. So, so communities come together in that, you know, so in that department. But it's like, I volunteer at the Lost Nation Theater once in a while. I help with the set design, the background, and whatever they need. And sometimes marketing, promotion, setting out letters and envelopes and getting out there to farmer's market and passing out, you know, for this show, and you could do all that. And if only a handful of people show up after you've just tried to get thousands of people to show up, you have no control of that. And even though all the, it's, it's up to the community to, 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 to be a part of what's in, what's in the community. To see itself to, to as a community. Correct. And that, correct. And, you know, I try to support, you know, and go to, Different, the co-op and different businesses all the time, you know, and, and it's... Now, you're it, a candidate who keeps up with the council, shows I up know, at the yeah. meetings, watches the orca shows, uh, understands to, to some degree what's involved in being a counselor, and it's not only sitting there on orca on a Wednesday night, no. it's preparing for it. All of those people sit on committees, Yeah. and... Why in the world do you want to do I this? I ask that. Nobody's no, getting rich. No, it's a great rich. question, and people ask me that all the time. I, I, well, I am, pa you know, I have two children, and 
How old? Um, they're 15. They just turned 15 and uh, 12. And, you know, I, I care about my community where I live. I'm passionate about it. And, uh, and, if the, and I feel like after the whole um, involvement with the speed limit, and I, I, I got a, made a lot of friends and got a lot of support. And it was emphasized, oh, you should run for council, you know. And um, I feel it's a, not an ob like a duty, like a civic duty to be um, to lead. I'm an Eagle Scout, you know, I was in scouting for 25 years and um, I just feel, you know, so there's a lot of community involvement in scouting and in the country too and different, a lot of uh, oh, um, merits that you have to and studies that you have to accomplish to get to your, to the highest ranking and, and um, it's the same, you know, leadership's important, having an open passion, care, and I think, above all things, love. You gotta really love yourself, your city, where you live, your community, you know, and that's... When we talk about community, we talk about inclusivity, diversity, and all. Do you feel that, in some ways, Montpelier is becoming a gated community? If only by the amount mm. of housing and the cost of housing and the cost of rental housing? Do you feel that? <laughs> sometimes I do, yeah, sometimes actually. I do you too. know, I, yeah. I do feel like uh, many are being priced out. Yeah. Uh, you can almost see it in the schools. The, the mm. percent of subsidized school lunches mm. has declined from when we came here, you know, years and years ago. You know, so yeah, that is a concern of mine. I, I, it's a concern of everyone. Yeah. Is there anything we can do as a community? I think we're doing it. I think we are trying, you know, every, what we're talking about, what the city's been trying to do, and uh, what's all, I mean, you, I'm from Porch Forum. You're constantly seeing events and activities, and the, what, this week we have something coming up. It's a... Um, well, we have Valentine's stuff and the dances dance. and contra dances. The, the yeah. father daughter dance. Yeah, there's a lot right. always going on. So it's all it's there. You know, the churches are trying to do their own thing. They're doing the Harry Potter uh, dinner coming up. Um, I want to say there's something coming up this weekend too that's pretty big. Um, you know, we had the last week the oh the art I have it here the art show. The well, art walk is this week. Right, the art walk is this week, and then we had the uh, festival down at Summit. Um, the snow on exactly yeah, on ice, yeah. Right, so there there's, there's <laughs> always constantly, and you go to the club and you see on the on the board on the bulletin board, and it's there's. I mean, you could spend an hour <laughs> reading all the stuff that's going on. So it's getting people to come out and you know participate is. I have two final questions. Again, these sure. are ones I ask every year. So if you were watching this last year, you know this mm. question's coming up. A counselor present or past, not on council, that you would really model yourself after. Who would, who would be someone who is a city council person who you think that person got it right? I haven't been here long enough to, to have known all the councils. So it's hard for me to say, but um, anyone on the present council? That was no, I think okay. everyone's pretty. See, here's the thing. I think on council, everyone's fresh. It feels like a new, even the mayor. You know, so out of the team, I call it. You know, the, this has to be a to make it all. You know, we want a, a a superstar team. You know, to make it really like you said. It's, um, Worthwhile and, and effective and 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 beneficial to to everyone. So I think and who's been there the longest has been Bill Frazier. Oh, absolutely. Bill's so been I here over twenty really, years. Really, you know, I, I respect and honor everything he's done, and and I think he's done a wonderful job, and he's very insightful, and he's he has the experience, and he's been there the longest. So I would model, you know, he's the only one that's had has been there the longest, and and is so well educated on on the process and, and the city and, and its growth and its changes and you know and hopefully in its future. And then the final question is everyone on council brings something to that table. 
And uh, there's a retreat after council is elected on town meeting day. They meet on a retreat and they set their goals. Mm -hmm. And everyone states, this is what I would like to see different. Uh, or this is my area that I would like to stake out. Would you have a defining project in, besides, your park, yeah, besides, besides your park? Besides your the park in, in and the speed and the speed limit. And the speed limit. Right to, is, is there a long something list? That there the, is. There is. I mean, um, is there a passion that, that you would like? I'm, to I'm also an artist. I'm a, uh, a multimedia artist. So there's and I had a, I did have permits and permission and where the old redemption center was. If you the remember, mall lot. That, that the, got torn right. down. Yeah, so that was a whole plan in place that never happened. Um, that wall was totally disgusting. It was falling apart. So I was going to, with the, uh, some of the, the I forgot, the, the resource teen center there. The, right, the, right. The youth the build. There's a youth build. And through, you know, me as an artist, we we're going to do this beautiful mural and make this area appealing and inviting and not this decaying wall. We got the permission. We got the, so when I went to refile the permits to do it, gathered all the paints, spray cans, donations. The wall came down. Well, yes, and Bill was like, well, look at the plans. And there was supposed to be a building that was going to go adjacent right. with a new redemption center. But that never happened. Right. And in retail. fact, the, the city is still puzzling right. about since what I gather is that yes. the Moat Trust doesn't want to build a building there now, and we're puzzling. It, it, what to it's do like with we that. got stood up basically on, right. on well. that project, and uh, it's too bad. So let's uh, remove the debris out of there first and the dirt and clean it up, and then see what we're, where we're at. With that. Would you yeah. favor uh, another building there that would give us more economic development, or a park that would be defining? Those are two different visions. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a, we just don't have a redemption center now, so it would be great. If well, we've got the what's called, we've got the area in front of Shaw's where you can take your bottles back. There is? They have, yeah, they have oh. machines in front oh, of Shaw's Oh, the machines, now. yeah, right, right. But again, that, that empty space, on yeah. one hand, people are talking about a building that would be the same height as height, the drawing yeah. board. Correct. On the other hand, people are talking about a pocket park. The and pocket park could exist right behind there, which already we there is one where the blind by building the, by used the, to be. Yeah, by right. the and by the bike path there. Right. There is there is a pocket park which could be a, a, expanded a little bit more. So, yeah, that's something to really uh, look at and, and and determine with you know with the team and. Uh, well, I want and of course, community feedback is the most important. The public, a, you know, feedback. I think for me, Montpelier is, is never short right. of public feedback. Sustainable but, infrastructure. You know, you want to talk to well. Sure. You know, that's the. Uh, what about net zero? Great, net zero. What's your feeling on that? Difficult to get to, but not impossible. Nothing's impossible. I think we could. Um, uh, we could get there. I mean, especially with, with that presentation that they had last with, you know, uh, generating energy that will go into the grid and then reducing costs for the city or eliminating net zero, right? Right, right. Yeah. Which is, again, the sewage plant and the right. grant that they got that allowed them to jump into another step that right. they didn't think they were going to be able to do. Which Anne will talk about in her uh, presentation to the mayor, and Bill will talk about in his presentation on the city budget. Inclusive community, I think we talked about um, more housing. Yeah. Where would we have more housing? Other well, than the savings pastor. Other there. than savings. There's, yeah, so um, there is some areas up on the District 3 also that that are just vacant lots that have been up for sale for a long time that were part of a development up behind Heber. That could continue back there and there could be some a nice development, nice affordable homes back there. Um, I, I, I don't recall what the acreage is, but it would be near that, that park that I suggested, um, maybe 30 plus acres back there. So there is room to grow and on River Street, you know, that uh, well, there's areas outside Terrace, uh, way over, also, yeah. that uh, Alan Goldman owns, mm. that have been talked about right. possibly yeah. affording housing. Right. 
So yeah, absolutely. I think it's, uh, but again, it has to be thoughtful, thoughtful planning and, you know, if you could also get the buses, people, I took the bus, bus the other day to Northfield and it was, uh, it was a great commute. I mean, it was fast, quick. I used the transit center, just picked it up. It was, a, it was, I think me and two other people. That's a shame. Yeah, I want to. Underutilized. Uh, yes. But it's there, or at least it's there, and we have, and hopefully people, you know, will, will use it more often. Especially if there's other outside communities that get developed, you know, so these buses could go into downtown, into these you areas. You mean seeing ourselves in a regional context? Yeah. So, I mean, they go, they go into Berlin, right? They go into Barry, they do the loops, so it's, it's accessible, and it, and it, and it works. Well, I want to thank you yeah, for, you're for coming in and talking to us. Yeah, I, thank you uh, for, this for the is opportunity. Eugene yeah. Leon, mm -hmm. who's running for District 3, the two-year term. And I want to talk to you now and say get out and vote on town meeting day. It is important. And it's important that we engage ourselves civically. And that only, not only means getting out and voting, but watch all the shows. Watch the show with Connor and, and Donna. Watch the show with the other candidates from District 3. Watch the show with Ann. Watch the show with the school board candidates, the shows, I should say, and the show with Libby and the show with um, Bill talking about school and city budgets. Inform yourself and make sure your neighbors and family get out to vote on town meeting day. Thank you so very much for watching this.